I know it sounds crazy, but at the time I was a single mom and I didn't have time to be sick. About nine o'clock that evening, I started not feeling very well. Thought I had heartburn. Um, 10 o'clock or so, I went to bed, probably dozed off for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, woke up and my arms hurt, my back hurt. Not horrible, but I just knew something wasn't right. So I sat there for a while, then I started feeling nauseous. So I got up, went in the bathroom, I got really sick. Well, I had taken my phone with me to the bathroom just in case, and by the time I was done getting sick, my arms hurt so bad, I couldn't hardly pick up my phone. Um, but I got the phone and I texted Stephanie and I said, you need to come over here, something's not right. As I was sitting on the bathroom floor, we started Googling symptoms of a heart attack. And I had, I would say nine out of 10 at least. So we discussed it for a while as to what to do. I hated to get Alexis up, it was a school night, you know. We finally decided I should probably go to the hospital. So I got up, I got dressed. By the time I got dressed, I was exhausted. I had zero energy left. I just felt horrible. Even though the symptoms say heart attack, surely that's not really what it was. I just kept thinking it can't be a heart attack. So most people have heard about the classical signs of heart attack. These uh, typically consist of chest pressure, chest heaviness, a squeezing sensation, tightness. These are the nature of the pain that uh, most people experience. Uh, however, especially in ladies, you may have pain in the back or just feeling weak, tired, uh, sleep disturbance, dizziness. Uh, and these kind of symptoms can be very common without heart attack as well. And uh, in case of Ronnie, she was very prompt in terms of figuring this out. Initially she said it was not like heart attack, but she was very active as symptoms went on to be more intense. Calling a friend she did and making a decision that she should seek help. In fact, the friend really helped her. Well, we called the ambulance, but the first responders of course got there first and they gave me a nitro pill. Um, didn't really help the pain or the discomfort at all. So I was convinced it really wasn't probably my heart. So we got in the ambulance and they did a mini EKG in the ambulance and it showed I wasn't having a heart attack. So the ambulance driver called, called it in and said that he was bringing a patient in complaining about chest pains but no signs of heart issues on the EKG. And when I got to the hospital, Dr. Sharma was already there. Dr. Sharma suggested that they do a sonogram of my heart. He said, we got to figure out what's going on. And once we put her on the cath lab table, we did a very emergent ultrasound of her heart to see uh, is this back pain coming from an iota problem or is it really having a heart attack? Her EKG was not the most classical for a heart attack. So once we did that, we knew her iota was fine and the front part of her heart was not moving. So we knew artery to this place must be 100% blocked. The last thing I remember was him standing, looking at the results, and he looked at his team and he said, we need to hurry. And with that blocked artery, then we proceeded uh, putting a wire through those blockages and a small balloon to see uh, how the flow is. And once that was established, we then put in a stent and with a single stent, she had an excellent uh, outcome and got her pain relief very promptly. After I was able to get up and move around, I mean, I could instantly tell the difference in how I, I didn't know I felt bad before, but I knew I felt better afterwards. The care I had while I was at Mosaic Life Care was great. Um, the ER staff was wonderful. The ICU nurses were wonderful. I can't thank them enough for all they did while I was here. It still amazes me that this all started on a Tuesday night. Um, I was discharged Thursday morning and back to work on Friday. But for whatever reason, the nurse on duty that night made that phone call and Dr. Sharma was at the hospital when I got there. And without that phone call, I probably wouldn't have got to see my daughter turn 12 and I wouldn't be here today to tell my story.